Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Schwab Coaching. My name is Mike Fairborn. Great to have you here for trading covered calls and short puts. We're going to kind of ring in the new year today with some buy right covered calls. Uh, several companies out there possibly positioned with the trend to bounce a little bit higher. So we're going to want to talk about those buy rights, how they can be a neutral, but mainly in a lot of ways, traders might look at those as a bullish trade as well. So looking forward to uh, going over that with you. Hope you're having a great day and a great day in the markets. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? We've got BJ, Peter, uh, Rick as well. Nice to have you all here, folks. You know, any questions, comments in the chat, throw those in so I can try to address those during our discussion here. We may be getting some help coming in shortly uh, from another coach to help us out. And there we go, Mr. John McNichol. By the way, you can follow John and I. John's a great friend of mine. You can follow him on Twitter right there. I, I should say X, formerly Twitter. Uh, John McNichol CS. Mine is Mike Fairborn CS. It's great to have you here. Hello to you, Tom, as well. Well, let's dive on into it. Plenty to look at today in terms of some possible bounces out there in the market. Again, if you're just getting here, we'll be taking a look at some of those buy right cover calls. We're going to ring in the new year with some of those uh, example trades. So jumping into disclosure items, get going here today. Options do carry a high level of risk. They're not suitable for all investors. Uh, information here is for general information purposes only. Should not be considered individual, individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security, chart pattern, or investment strategy. Now, with that, too, I wanted to state that investing does involve risk, including the loss of principal. So slide here. A quick note to make, too, is we do, do discuss short options in this class, call side and put side. Short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in-the-money amount. An ITM option does have a high risk of being assigned early. Please keep that in mind. Finally, here too, well, I'll look at the option Greeks. We'll get into some of those in just a moment. Uh, pick money application is for educational purposes only. So with that, turning to our agenda, as we always do in these classes here, a couple of key points to keep in mind. Big picture, folks. What are uh, option selling strategies? We're going to look at selling calls today as we buy stock and sell call. That is the creation really of a buy right covered call. Types of option selling strategies. Of course, we have a number of different types we talk about, but it will be buy rights today. And we will we'll be looking at examples on the Thinkorswim paper money platform too. So great to have you here. Uh, and thank you, John, very much for helping out in the chat. Welcome everybody. Let's dive on into a market discussion initially here. I've got the S&P 500 up right now. And let me expand the size of that. There is no reason for you to be squinting at that screen when I can just go like that to very large right there. Okay. So look at the market and we'll go full screen over here too as we take a look at this, but a couple of quick notes, just big picture. It's good to kind of step back from time to time, which we do with the broader market. A lot of times, you know, it is interesting to get the market and important, I think in many cases to try to be on the the same side of, uh, in terms of the trend of the market. There are 500 companies in the S&P 500. It can have an impact on any individual stocks. And by the way, we're just looking at market moves at this point. Checking out strength. You can see this. Uh, we posted this, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, this measurement gap right here, where it did kind of spell a topping point over here, at least maybe short term. Now, what's interesting is we did come back here too. Uh, to a moving average. And let's just pull that over right now and take a look at that. We do have a 20 period moving average and that's not too uncommon for price action to come back to a 20 period moving average uh, to pull back counter to, to the direction of the underlying trend. So you can see that we are breaking higher right now. Obviously the market's not closed. We still have a couple hours left in the trading day. But if I scoot this over here, you can see that we are you know, technically above the 20 period moving average right now. Right now, the short term moving average, the 10 that I have up here in uh, black, uh, that oftentimes can be a sign for an entry for, um, you know, a short term trader might look at that, the, the, the break above here. But one key point I wanted to note it note is that this could be right now, depends on where we close today, but that could be considered a K hold. So we might be getting a K hold in the market, which could mean a drive higher in the direction of the underlying trend. And where is that underlying trend? Well, there it is. We can pull back to a one year, two year. You're roughly going to get the same thing. Higher highs and higher lows is what define a trend. And that could be right there. Sort of the moderate pullback in that trend. 
uh, if we begin to go higher, which has pretty much been the case with a lot of moves back to the 20 period moving average, as you can see over here, when the price of the market is in fact trending, right? It's gotta be trending, uh, but that would be the pullback. We're seeing something similar here too, NDX, let's pull it up, the NASDAQ 100, because we will be looking at some of the calls, uh, buy right cover calls on both, uh, within both indices, uh, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500 as well. If you look over here with me, there is your 20 period moving average. You can see the NASDAQ really showing some strength and it does look like, we don't, we can't say for sure, but it looks like we, we will get a K hold today, close above the high of the low day, which is like we've said before. And this is one of the indications that traders look at when they're trying to determine if a pullback is going to then resume in an upward direction, right? And that is, is at least it gets started by closing above the high of the low day. You can, you can go back and just test these as well. There was a close above the low bar. You see it, low bar, low bar, low bar. Break, we closed above it, the high, and there's your move. It's not a guarantee, but it is a, an additional indication that traders will look at for a short-term type move. All right. So with that, I wanted to also talk about where we've been for the last couple of weeks. We did put on the last time I was here, although we've had a couple of Mondays off, haven't we? So it's been a bit since we've had this class, but I want to go over here and go to the trade tab, uh, excuse me, monitor tab, and just look at our account, not our account statement. Um, well, actually, I have done the account statement. I wanted to actually look at monitor tab initially and just show you here. This is where we keep track of our paper trades, which we will do each and every week. Remember, this class is really intended to try to find ways to generate income from the markets by selling calls or puts. Okay, and you can see over here, I think these are mainly just puts that we have in place. And this is the results of those thus far. I wanted to review those real quick because they are short puts and we may want to consider closing some of them if they've already reached a gain that we consider maybe above 80% of the total premium or whatever the case might be. Let's go ahead and take a look at those right now. We did have gold here. In fact, we sold three contracts on gold. That would be G-O-L-D and that would be Barrett Gold right there. And there is Barrett Gold. Now we sold just pulling up Barrett Gold right here. We sold this, uh, it's been a while, like I said, since we've had this class, but uh, we only have 11 days left for this January monthly contract, but that is the contract that we ended up selling puts on. If you come over here, let's take a look at it right now. This is our scenario right here, our setup. We sold it for 28 cents, but we did do three contracts here. So what do we have left? On this, it's worked in our favor. In other words, prices have held above really the strike price by expiration, which is what we look for. But we really only have a very moderate, very small amount of just two cents, two and a half cents left remaining. And you can see that right there. If we were to close that out, you know, we're probably closing out at three cents, right? If we're able to do it right there. So what do you think? Have we captured what we wanted to capture on this? Or are we gonna wait 11 more days before we utilize this money just to pick up three cents per contract. I'm pulling up my chat right now. Hello, Joe, life as well as Fred. Great to have you here. What do you guys think? We've done okay. We have collected about, oh, let's see. So we sold at 28 cents. So we're real close to about 25 cents we've, we've collected on this right now. So what does 25 represent? What, what, what are we looking at in terms of proportions? 25 divided by 28. So about 89, real close to 90% of the gains. And Wayne, Chuck, take the profit. I'll tell you what, I'm in line with that. Let's go ahead and take the profit right now. Now, one nice thing about the Thinkorswim platform too, we're, we're, um, we're reviewing this obviously in paper money, but for live accounts, if we'd sold any option and we're able to close it, that is buy it back at five cents or less, then there is no charge of commission. That's kind of nice because we did have three contracts that could be commission times three, right? Times three commission. We don't have to have that. We don't have to worry about that if we're closing it at five cents or less. So that's just another driver that we have to potentially close it. And we are seeing the closes coming through. Close it, close it, close it, take the profit very well. Take the money and move on to the next trade. There we go. So, I mean, you're sitting around and it could go against you. You could lose it, 
right? Or you could just take it off for the three cents. We're going to do that right now. Let's make sure, though, if I just close it right there, I might mess it up because it only wants to populate uh, one contract. But if I right click over here, create closing order, it automatically puts in the three contracts correctly. We'll hit confirm and then send, and we've closed out our gold. Okay, so we've got others to look at here as well. We did a J and J. Now I had to do J and J. We got. I wanted to look at this because we've got actually a potential trade today on J and J in terms of a buy right. Let's go into Johnson and Johnson right now, and as you can see, J and J right there. Uh, we have had an interesting reversal on Johnson and Johnson. Now we sold this a little while ago. But you can see that it's done actually more than we might have anticipated with that short put. We had a, a fairly nice recovery. In fact, we ran up to some highs, uh, bounced across some some longer term moving averages, right? It's, it's kind of like resistance. But then we kind of held a higher low, breaking above highs and resting above there again. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in just a moment. But here we are. 11 days left, same contract. We've got 10 left, uh, excuse me, I should say 10 uh, cents left to buy it back at. Here's our position right there. You can see that we've basically covered a little over you know, 90% of our gains roughly at this point in time as well. So picking up on what we just discussed a second ago around the 90% level, we're gonna go ahead and close that out as well, okay? I'm gonna take some of the closes that we saw previously in the chat. We're going to push it forward into this stock and say, we're going to buy this one back as well. Now, will there be commission here? Well, it's 10 cents, right? So it's it's not 5 cents or less, it's 10 cents. So we've got that, but I wanted to do the, a close this out because we're going to be putting a, a buy right paper money trade in here as well. So let's close that out. Uh, there we go. And We've got one more. We've almost closed out all our trades, but this is common. We will be kind of going through this each and every week. I think our gains were in the $230 range or so, um, paper money gains, uh, just so you know. But we've been closing those out. Last one, MNST. So let's do it. Here is our monster, monster MNST. All right. Uh, and there we go. So. A similar theme, and we'll be looking at a similar theme today in terms of the trend being strong, but looking at Monster right here, what do we see? Well, this was actually a longer term upward trend. Here is, oh, here's our weekly, just to kind of get a, a glimpse of where we were at on the long term basis. We pulled back, had excellent earnings here, as you recall. Let's pull back and we consolidated right there. We did sell a put at 52.50, thinking that we may hold above this gap up level, which is where earnings were. And we were correct thus far. Let's explore that trade right now and just see where we're at. There's our 5250. Again, these were all in Jan, January, the, the monthly contract. Uh, let's scoot on over here and take a look at it. Again, these were uh, options, folks, that did have a fair number of open interest. I think all of them had uh, roughly four figures in the thousands. So that can help to facilitate tighter spreads, which is nice when you're closing it out. It's not five cents or less on the ask where we're buying it back. If I click on that, you can see us right here. So we have captured, well, real close to, okay, so we're at 52 right now out of 60. Let's just pull it up and just see our numbers. I think we're actually really quite high. Was it 52.50? So I'm just taking the 52.50. I'm not doing them in, in a decimal format or anything. I'm just looking at dollars right now. We're just seeing how that compares to the total 60. So 87.5% gain uh, on that amount. Wasn't a huge amount to begin with, but it, regardless, we were able to capture that. So I will go ahead and just push this one forward too, and we will close this one out with a commission charge, right? But with just a single contract is what we had on there. So now, boy, that went quick. We've just freed up our entire position over here zeroed out we closed them again what does this do for us well when you do take them off the table and you're looking at you know i think the highest the highest ones here were 10 cents and they went down to about three cents here for gold but by doing that you're taking actually risk off the table as well even there are only 11 days left i have seen stocks in the past and i'm sure you have too and believe me, people have short puts on them, but the price will be up here. There'll be a few days left. And by the way, we're approaching earnings season two. I mean, well, we're 
we're kind of getting in the midst of it um, here. But uh, I've seen pullbacks here that were just a few pennies. Before you know it, you're in the, the dollar plus range and you've given back all your gains and then it turns into a loss. So even when you do close them out, it's a way to eliminate risk as well. I mean, potential risk. There's not as much risk. They're way out of the money, but risk nonetheless. All right. Well, let's do that. Um, let's see. Chuck said, did they go to eight cents? Good question. I don't know. Uh, it, sometimes you can close those out. It depends on sometimes the uh, the spread there too, Chuck, between the bid and the ask. If it's a penny-wide option like over here, uh, I don't know if this is penny-wide. In fact, let me just do this real quick. Watch if I go over here. It is. It's penny-wide. So I guess it did close out at $0.08. Cents. Thank you. Sometimes when it's 5 to 10, it maybe, not fit, it maybe won't fit in. So let's just scroll down. Good eyes. There it is. We got an $0.08 cents close on that. So we got a little bit better than the dime. Uh, cool. All right. Well, we, we mentioned today we we're going to talk about buy rights and kind of ring in the new year with buy right covered calls. And so that is a very interesting strategy. The first time I heard of it, I thought that's actually really quite cool. It kind of reminds me <clears throat> initially when I first thought of I uh, first heard of it. We're actually going to start off with J&J, &J too. So we'll uh, dive into it here. But you own the stock, you buy the stock and you sell a call. At the same time, uh, just picking up on that a little bit, I want to talk a little bit more about this. It is seen as kind of a neutral, can be neutral to certainly bullish type strategy. Remember what happens when we sell a call? When we sell a call at a particular level, we're looking for the price of the stock to you know, uh, stay normally on a covered call below that level. So let's see if we sold the 165 here. We sold one call option. Normally, a lot of traders might say, well, I think the price of the stock might go into a sideways range for a period of time, and I'm just going to try to collect a premium around there instead of just losing time on it. So that might be a, an initial thought that they might have. But when you buy the stock and sell the call at the same time, you're actually trying to collect. You know, One approach is you're trying to collect the premium as well, right? You want that premium. Sure. Uh, and you're also wanting the price of the stock to continue to go up. And this makes more sense, actually, if I zoom on into it. Let's do it right now. Let's, let's, uh, there we go. Let's get this pulled over here. So we're looking for the price of the stock to extend what we thought was originally happening, happening with that short put. We thought there might be a likelihood of it holding above 150. And here we go. We want to see it extend that trend to the upside. And and we're basically we're in a better position if the price of the stock closes above uh, 165, right? Let's explain this right now. A couple of things. First off, when we do sell a call up top here, right, we're very likely to get uh, our shares uh, taken from us, right? We'll get assigned on that call. We'll have to give up our shares of stock, right? Um, let's see, assigned. They get they. We lose our shares of stock. Let me put it that way, okay? So there is, uh, like we said, though, an assignment can happen at any time. But if the price of the stock comes up above here before expiration, right? First of all, we don't make any money on that 100 shares that we bought down here, right? We don't make any money on it above the 165 because we sold a call here. That's okay. We're looking at this, and what traders will look at is, folks, it's all about capturing that premium. They don't know the strength of the stock maybe above 165. They think it might go there, but they don't know for sure. There are a couple of things that come to mind. Let's roll let's go through some scenarios here so I can talk about that with you. Okay, let's let's get this corrected. There we go. Get it all set back up. A um, few things. So if the price of the stock were to drop simply go lower here. We have a max loss. The max loss is going to be whatever we lose on that stock. If we have 100 shares of stock, the stock goes to zero. Yeah, that's going to be a max loss. Of course, we do get to keep the premium as well from the call. Right? There is that call premium that we do get to receive. That's a consideration. Okay. If the price of the stock were to go sideways for a period of time and continue to hold you know, maybe below that level, there there might be some resistance over here. I think, although we've probably broken above 
some key resist uh, some key resistance, so it might be support here. But if we were to bounce around a little bit, well, we still have our stock, but we might just be able to collect that option premium is what we'd be able to do over that period of time by expiration if there's no assignment, right, on that. So if it goes sideways, we would still get a gain there, right? And then, of course, if it goes higher, got a lot of scribbles again, so let's, let's erase those. But if we go above that 165, well, a couple of things happen. We make money on the stock between where it's at right now. Okay, so real close to 160 to 165. And then we also get to capture the premium on the option as well. Okay, I wanna go through each of these scenarios. So we can see the kind of the percentage re return that we're getting off of this too, as we go through it. Okay, so let's look at a few of these scenarios. The first one I wanted to look at, I kind of explained the max loss, um, you know, if the stock goes to zero. If Johnson & Johnson were to go to zero, because we own that, right? That's part of the position. The next one, the price of the stock goes sideways. And let's just say that by February, the monthly contract at expiration, let's say prices go sideways and we do not make any gains on the stock at all. But what we're able to do is we're able to sell the call here. I'm going to move us out to February. We have some decisions to make in terms of what time frame we're looking at here. But there is your 165. This has got 39 days left to expiration. The call right here, as you can see at 165, it's out of the money. It's not at the money. We think the price is going to go potentially higher, playing the role of the trader here. But that's what we're able to sell it for right there, One, 168. Let's say we got $168 per contract, uh, less commission. Let's kind of put commission part on hold for just a second, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show us kind of what our return on this would be right now. Okay, so what are we looking at right now? So if the price of the stock just were to go sideways, how does a buy right covered call help us? So by expiration next month, nothing happens. It's still at 160. I'm going to call it 165, by the way. And let's just say it's 190 on the premium. Let's round. Let's get to some round numbers here, just so we've got it. So let's say we're getting 190. It's not exactly where we're at, but for the sake of doing this, making it easy, let's pull this up. So a dollar 90 is what I'm going to put in the calculator here. I'm going to divide that by our 165. Excuse me, 160. 160 is what I'm assuming we're buying this at right now. We'll just say 160.5. That's closer to 160.5. Okay, where the stock's at right now. So that is, well, if you look at it here, it's about, you know, it rounds up to about a 2% return. A 2% return is what you're getting through that November, uh, excuse me, February timeframe. Does that make sense? What we're looking at here is a theta gain. The price of the stock expires over that time frame. By the way, there's earnings in here too, something to be mindful of, but there you go. That's by itself. Now, if it's gonna do what we're anticipating it doing, Playing the role of the investor again, the stock goes from uh, 650, uh, 160.5 to 165. Let's add this up plus our 190. And let's see what the return is when the price of the stock goes above the 165 by expiration, just so you can see percent returns on a strategy like a buy right here. Okay, so where are we? We're at 165. We know it's going to be 450, but we'll go through the math because these things can vary. I'm just going to take my number, my expected. Uh, price move above 165 by expiration. Subtract out 160.5 right there, and it's 4.5. Now we're going to add to that our 190 because we're anticipating that we're going to be able to collect uh, that premium by expiration. So what's our total? Total is $6.40. So you see how that it does enhance our return, the premium in line with this move. Now, if I take that and I divide it now by our 160.5, you can see that our gain is substantially better. It's very, very close there, right? To a 4% return through February. So over to that February, by February expiration, we're looking at about a 4.4 approximate, or just, I'll say, excuse me, a 4% return on this strategy, which does account for price of the stock going to 165, not making gains above there because we sold the call, uh, but then also capturing the premium of the call. So any questions on that as it stands right now? Okay, that's what we're looking at on this particular trade. And by the way, 
We're tapping in again to the technicals. Not all the trends are going to look the same as we go through these, of course, but they're all going to kind of have an upward trend. Some just barely starting. As you can see, J&J's trend has been kind of down for a while, but short-term trend may be ticking up. Also, I don't know if you caught this, but we are just above the 200-day moving average and this long-term kind of a sloping trend line that I, I oftentimes will draw off the bottoms of trends. You notice if you draw that off the bottom, sometimes it does give interesting support and resistance levels right there. This is interesting too, because it's it's sort of, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, obviously, but it is it is kind of giving a little bit of a flag pattern right above here. A quick note on this as well. Um, I did look into this, and this is something you can do. Um, I'm on Schwab.com here, but I just scrolled down under J and J. There you are, right there, J and J. Uh, and I pulled it up, and I went down here, right off the main page. So I'm on Schwab.com. I went to research, research tools. I threw in the symbol J and J. Scrolled down, and you can see right there historical earnings. Well. You've got historical earnings, but just above it, you've got upcoming earnings. And this is really cool, too, because it does give us some guidance and tells us here that what are the expectations on an uh, analyst, uh, consensus analyst estimate basis? Do you see it's going higher? But, well, the bar graph kind of shows it, too. It just inches up. I guess you could say the biggest move is right around the first quarter of this year as well. So expectations are for... Johnson & Johnson's earnings to go higher. Is that a guarantee? No, it's a projection, but sometimes prices can follow those projections, particularly if they've been accurate in the past. Okay, this is also a dividend aristocrat too. A little side note. A lot of little side notes here today on JNJ, &J, but there you go. So a few things to keep an eye on. Now, one thing that might stand out to you is if you were coming over here and you threw in a company that had a negative earnings guidance, that might give you some pause. You might say, gosh, I don't know. Uh, remember, we were looking at this and we were saying there is an earnings announcement over here. We don't want that to be working against us. So what could we? What else could we look at? There are a fair number of things. I teach a class uh, tomorrow, actually towards the end of the day. It's actually at 3, 3 uh, p.m. Uh, mountain time. Uh, but uh, that class, a lot, you know, we do incorporate a lot of fundamental analysis, uh, but that's just something that could be done just as a, a glance as to what's expected maybe over earnings. You get that right on Schwab.com. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. It only takes like a second to put, well, you know, a minute, not a second. It, that's not, that's a little bit longer than that. About a minute to pull up or less. And that includes signing in. Got to sign in. All right, let's do this. All right, let's go over here. And there are two ways to put in the covered call. Uh, buy right cover call where we're buying the stock and immediately selling the call. There are two ways to do it. I like the latter, but I'm going to show you the former first. Um, some might like this. You can go in here and just like right. Well, you can right click on the 165, which would be considering selling. Right. We talked about that. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go up top to buy. And here it is. Uh, scroll on down to covered stock. I'm just going to left click on that covered stock right there. It's going to create both here for us. Notice what it's doing. It's selling that covered call. Excuse me, it's selling the call portion right there. Lined it up beautifully because we clicked, we right clicked on it. But it's also buying 100 shares of stock. It nets the two out for us and it provides a debit. That debit is exactly the price of the stock less the premium we're receiving from that covered call. It's putting it over here for us so we can put it in as a single trade. That is one way to do it. Another way to do it is to simply buy the stock, right? And you can come down here. Oh, where are you? Oh, you're hidden. It's scrolling, but I don't have much room. That's what you get when you go uh, like ultra big font size. There we go. So that might be trickier to do within our presentation. Am I going to go and sell it on the ask side? No, stop right there in your tracks. We got to go to the bid. We're selling the call. We sell on the bid. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the control button down on the keyboard right there. I'm gonna click on it. Uh, I cannot create a custom. Oh, hang on. I think I need to do. You know what? I might just stick to the other one. The other one uh, because I believe the other one is gonna be a little bit easier. I've got I've got to actually go down here. You can't see this on the screen, but my screen, my font size is too big. But if I click on that single order, it's just pulling up on my second screen. A um, 
first triggers uh, sequence. Uh, as you can see, I've selected that, and now I can go in if I wanted to. Wow, I'm not going to do this on my next one uh, with this font size, but let's go down here, and I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to left-click it. Okay, I can't create a custom spread. That's okay. I'll tell you what. Um, what I'm going to do is do it the other way, the way that I said I rarely use, and we're going to do that right now. So let's do that. Font size is mandating it. That's fine. All right, let's pull it up. So here we are. We've got our option chain. We're going to click on that right here. I'm going to scroll on down. You can right click on here. It doesn't matter if you're on the bid or the ask, actually. Go to buy. There is your covered stock right there. And there is the trade. Now let's just make sure that that's working and it's not. I'm going to delete it and do it again. I had an additional order in there. So yours is going to look, you know, on your paper money like this. If you're just starting from scratch, it's going to look like this. Okay, it's just going to have that. But just confirm it. Make sure you've got it. You are going to be purchasing it because you're buying the stock, though, right? Um, I've got a limit on there. I'm going to hit confirm. We can look at our order, the max loss. We talked about that. The stock goes to zero because we're buying the stock. We are buying the stock. Uh, we had our max gain, our max profit. The premium, as well as the move in the stock price up to the strike, uh, up to the strike price, and the premium on the option as well, if it uh, goes above the strike price by expiration, right, or just expires, we've got that right there. And here you go, your max loss. Let's send it on through. Okay. All right. So let's just let that sit out there. This has gone up to two hundred, so a little bit higher return, maybe. Maybe we're above a little bit above four percent right now. We'll see if we get a fill on that next trade. Let's keep it rolling here. Um, okay, so GEHC. So we have this GE Healthcare Technology, which only began actually over here not too long ago. In fact, this is the 200 day moving average. There's not much left. I mean, I'm sorry, there's not much to it. We don't have 200 days. We've had 200 days of data starting at that point right there, but you notice we're above it. We are not yet above, but we are above. We did move above the 10 period moving average. So I know these are massive extremes, aren't they? I got the 200 day on one side and the 10 on the other, but we are above the 200 day. You can see that the trend of the stock is clearly higher highs and higher lows. You've seen us trade this pattern before on short puts as well as some of these longer term cover calls, right? There you have it. We're above the 200 day moving average and a little bit of a flag pattern possibly over here and some early indications, although the market's not closed on the day, but what you tell me, did we close above that 10? Uh, okay, we're trading above the 10 right there, the 10 period moving average, but that can be uh, maybe a, a shorter term momentum that we are ready to possibly get going higher. Uh, close above the high, the low day, a K hold. There's our feel on JNJ. Uh, let's go ahead and put a trade in on GE Healthcare Technology. Again, what is our expectation for the price of the stock to go higher? Now, you have to determine, you know, how high do you think it's going to go? You, if you really thought it was going to move up really big, you wouldn't want to sell a covered call at all. This fits into those scenarios, folks, where we could also see prices dip a little bit. Like in this in this scenario, what if prices were to dip and go down a little bit? Well, actually, like we saw on the prior example, we're making close to, it was close to 2%, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, maybe it was 1.2%. I'm sorry. Well, maybe it wasn't quite 2%, but we were making uh, a return on uh, the stock if it were to go maybe sideways and that, that option expires worthless. Okay, if it does expire worthless. Um, keep that in mind. It's kind of giving you a little bit of downside buffer, like we saw just on J&J, &J, if prices were to go down, because remember that premium can help ultimately to offset small losses on a move to the downside. That's possible too, right? So you do get a little bit of that benefit too, um, as we were looking at that. Okay, so having said that, Let's go ahead and go to the trade tab right now, pull this up, and we have to kind of determine, I'm still in the month of February here. What are we looking at? Well, if we wanted to go 80, that's not very much. Well, it's about 
two and a half points before we get to 80 from here. So you're, you know, it kind of depends on what your expectation for the move is. If we thought this was going to be sort of a measured move, in other words, uh, a run from here, consolidation, another run up, maybe getting closer to one, excuse me, to 85, you kind of have to determine, do you want to sell the 80 or the 85? We have plenty of time for that move to occur. And this is where we're at. Okay. Type into the chat, 80 or 85, which one do you think? And it does just depend on individual traders, but whatever we see the most uh, in the chat, we'll go ahead and sell that one. But folks, again, that just comes down to, you know, your own sort of, let's see, indications as to how high it's going to go. 80 would be a buy right. You're not getting much gain off the stock, right? But of course, you're going to get more off of the option, the, the sold call. A lot of that is going to depend on where you think that is going to head higher. I'm seeing an 80 here from Chuck. Okay, this is kind of a buy right class. I'm kind of leaning that way as well. Uh, and yeah, you know, it would give us more buffer. I'm using that word if it were to dip down a little bit too, Chuck. Right? Life. Oh, we're getting some 85s though. Okay. But let's see, if we were to go down like this, sideways a little bit, it gives us more to offset it. Feel free to put in whatever you'd like into your paper trades. I'm going to start off with this one for now. Let's go ahead and right click right there. We're going to go ahead and buy up top. You got to not buy custom, right? That's your actual order. So buy, scoot on down to covered stock, and we'll put it in. So there's our debit right there. Let's take a look at this right now. We are at 80. We clicked on 80. Okay, run through your order, take a look at it, confirm everything you've got there, buy one cover stock, which is selling right here as well. Okay, you're going to get obviously a higher return overall if you went for the 85. Let me just do a quick comparison so you can see the differences here. This is important also, not only where you think the price is going to go, but what kind of return you might be getting on that. Thank you for your uh, notes there, uh, your, your feedback there. I want to go through both so you can see each of these here. Okay, so what was our, let's do our 80 first that we looked at here. So here is the 80. We're going to collect um, about, I think, what did we get on it? We got 180, $1.80, still sitting out there. Uh, I'll just say 175 for now is what we're getting on the premium, plus the difference in price there. So let's take a look what we might get. So here is our calculator, looking at the 80 first. If price of the stock closes above 80 by expiration, it's holding above that level. First of all, we know that we're going to get 80 minus, we'll just be really straightforward here, 77.25. I'm going to round it because numbers are changing so quick right there. But we're going to get about 275, right, in terms of the price move. Plus, we had 1.75 in terms of the premium. So about $4.50 we can capture with that premium if we're above 80 by expiration. I'm going to divide that right now by our 77.25, assuming, assuming it was at that level. And you're getting about a 5.8% return on this buy right covered call at that point in time. Above expiration, now there is an earnings announcement in there as well. Right, so you could check those expected earnings on top of that, but that is your return over that time frame. Now, this return, if we go to the 85, will be ultimately very likely higher. You're going to be getting uh, a lower premium, but more gains on the stock. Let's do that right now. What was our number here? So let's say we were able to get 55 cents <clears throat> for the 85. But if you were more bullish on this trade, there are more gains to be potentially made here uh, in this paper trade. Let's pull it up right now. Um, <clears throat> 85, we're going to calculate the price move first, 85 minus. We're going to use the exact same numbers to make them comparable as before, 77.25. So that's a move of $7.75 plus our um, <clears throat> 55 off the premium. Oops, sorry, that's got to be a 0 .55, 0 .55. There you go. $8.30. We'll divide that by our 77.25. So you can get that number as well. So it's not 5.8%, it's, it's approximately 10.7%, uh, 10.7% right there, okay. Okay, 
10.7%. So if you if you did have that bias and you thought it was going to rally up to that 85, you could get a greater return on it clearly by selling the one further out. Now, what I want to do, because we just have a few more minutes left, is I want to go in here. That's right, you got it. Chuck, yep, there's more stock appreciation. Stock appreciation will really account for quite a bit more of a return if you're bullish. But then again, if the price were to go sideways over that time frame, remember, you're just getting a lot less, right? Because you're not getting as much off. You sold the 85 instead of the 80. So it's based upon your expectation, right? And that's a future event. So, all right, let's do this one, CPRT. By the way, these last two, GEHC and CPRT, they're both in the um, NASDAQ 100. And the NASDAQ 100, as we looked, had shown some strength. This is with K hold as well right now. You can see it's kind of bouncing off the 100 day moving average. You see the trend here? I don't want to miss that. There's your longer term weekly trend. There's a pullback to a possible support level right there. Everybody see that? We've come down. Now we're getting our K hold right here on this co-part. Now, what I wanted to do on this was not do a, a buy right covered call uh, because the extension here could be actually rather large if it did go into, let's say, a measured move. In fact, if this move right here were to unfold as this move, we could go to 55. We could go to 50. We're really quite low. But if the price of the stock were to just at least run up to 50, what happens to those covered calls? What happens to the calls in general? The calls would be worth a lot more. So this is kind of an anticipatory trade. It's not exactly a buy right. I'm just kind of thinking outside the box just slightly for a second, just saying, well, I could buy low here. And if it did do what I thought, I could maybe sell at 50 for the 55 when the stock hits there for the, the 55 uh, short call, just as an idea. Now, what would what would those strike prices look like? Okay, if I start fiddling, it really goes crazy fast. Okay, here we go. Uh, there we go. So what if it went to 50 and we just thought, well, I think it'll at least go to 50 and then we could try to sell that 55. So if it were at 47, uh, 19, so about a $2.80, excuse me, yeah, $2.80 cent move is what we're looking like to get there. I'm going to do uh, this and show you what this might look like. Here's our 55 now. We get nothing. Well, yeah, to sell it at zero at 55 right now. But if the price of the stock were to run up to 50, what does the 50 look like? What does the 5250 look like? And what does the 55 look like? We're going to go over here into our layout. We're going to jump right into Theo price. And I'm just going to make an adjustment over here into the, the theoretical price. And I'm going to say it starts to move now. OK, and a move like this or this, we don't know if that'll happen, but if it did follow through, we would say that maybe in a week we can gain two dollars and 80 cents. We're just prognosticating here, but that's what we're going to punch in here. We're going to make some comparisons. So stock price in, in one week. So we'll go out next week right there to the 15th. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the stock price is going to go uh, to. Okay, it's going to move up by $2.80 right there. Pull it over here, and there you go. Oh, okay, should good. We're, we're right there. Uh, let me take this off, and now we can look over here at our Theo price. Do you see the Theo price now? What are the differences? If somebody were to wait and they were to get it right because they just thought it was going to move to 50, and then they could consider selling, this 40, based upon a Theo, an expected price of the move that we just looked at, if it goes to 50, in that period of time, they could sell the 50 for a dollar 30, more than double. Uh, we're still not getting any, well, I'm sorry, the 55, we are getting very little. It's eight, about 18 cents approximately. This was a dime, it's now 53 cents. So substantially higher just by waiting. So what we're gonna do, we're going to put in this sort of anticipatory trade for that short put, excuse me, short call over there on that time frame. We're gonna buy 100 shares of this because uh, you have to have at least 100 shares of stock to sell a call against it, right? Standard equity options contract. There's 100 in there. Let's go ahead and buy this. We'll have this and I will move this over into this account so that we have it. We just got to fill on it already, but I've got to take these, uh, where are they? Unallocated probably. I'll put them in here. And so we'll fill them up. We've got 
So th we lost three today. We closed those out, folks. We just added three more in there. All right. Now, let's see. Hey, there was a survey in the chat, folks. If you get a chance to fill that, I'd love to see any comments, questions you have. If there's anything you like about the class or whatever the case is, I read through each one of those. And so too does my manager. He reads through. Uh, so happy to... Uh, yeah, just you know, any feedback you've got, there's the survey link right there. Uh, let's see if John could potentially repost that. There it is, awesome, right on cue. Thank you, sir. And uh, on top of that, um, yeah, definitely consider subscribing to our Trader Talks channel. If you like, if you do like today's presentation, smash that like button because what that will do, that will help the YouTube algorithm to put this content up more frequently for you in um, YouTube as you go into it. But there it is, right there. And there is Mr. McNichol himself in all his glory. Excellent. Uh, it would say right over here, subscribe. Smash that subscribe. Very, very easy to do. You can get our content showing up more frequently for you. There is the link right there. Uh, let's see, Chena says, I want to make sure we get this last question. Let me know. I think we're just about finishing up here. But um, excellent. Since it is a K hold, can I put my uh, stop loss at the entry price? if I place the order at the end of the day. So stop loss at the entry price. I mean, you could put uh, uh, an order like that. Um, yeah, I mean, you could consider things along those lines. Uh, where do you want to put a potential order at? Sometimes you might just wait to the last 10 minutes of the day, too. That might be a consideration as you look over here. Honestly, you can just look up top and just say, well, how am I doing towards the end of the day? Am I getting close to it? Uh, where am I at relative to the close above the high to low day using uh, this copart as an example, maybe the last 10, 15 minutes, because you're right, there is a little bit of a window there where you kind of have to think through that and kind of anticipate, am I going to get a K hold or not? I like the question, but that would be a way. There are a number of different ways to do that, right? All right. Well, uh, and then just a final note, uh, folks, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're all set through our comments and everything down here. All right. That's what we had today. It's great to be with you folks. As always, throw questions uh, in the chat. Let us know uh, anything. But that was our agenda. We we went through everything right, covered all these, and as well as some examples on the platform. And hopefully that buy right cover call makes a lot more sense to you right now as we go through it and why traders and investors might use it. Remember, neutral, the kind of bullish type trade based upon a number of different considerations that you might have on the underlying stock. All right. Well, with that, it was been, it's been great being with you. Thank you so much, John, for your help. And uh, this this uh, presentation does go through process of being uh, recorded as well, so it could be a replay there. All right, everybody, have a great rest of the day. Look forward to future discussions.